Hello, I'm Jake Verma, and I'm here today with Rebecca Sweeney uh, from our Living Lab team. Uh, Becky, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi there, I'm Becky Sweeney. As, as Jake said, I'm the business lead for our, our Living Lab. Um, give you a little bit of an intro to the lab. It's a facility we've built as a kind of a national trial and, and, and demo asset. Uh, whereby uh, if you've got if you're an innovator who has a new product or an energy related service and you want to get uh, really rich consumer feedback combined with data on on how the tech is is working within real consumers homes uh, we work with innovators to take those out to our, our living lab homes and and test them uh, the living lab itself is is made up of around about 250 homes at the moment and we're, we're growing daily and uh, people sign up to take, take part in the Living Lab. They uh, uh, join us, they provide us a little bit of information and they consent to us um, offering them trials that they might want to take part in. And they also consent to us taking uh, data streams from their homes um, and using those in our research. Yeah, so the data stuff is what we're talking about today. Um, so we have some of the Living Lab data from the previous two winter trials before we moved to the new system. Um, so tell me a little bit about how things have been progressing with the Living Lab and how um, coronavirus has impacted uh, the lab's ability to run trials. Um, so we've been actually very fortunate in how we've set up the lab that we've been able to continue running trials through the, the various lockdown periods we've seen over the last year and a half. Um, and the, the start of the pandemic actually coincided with a, a refresh we were doing at the facility. Um, so we uh, replaced our, our data platform. Previously, we had a, a research tool uh, that was developed back in 2015. Um, and at the start of uh, last year, we actually created a new data platform, which enabled us to, oh, sorry, a new digital platform, which enabled us to connect with commercial off the shelf technologies. So to be able to bring data from those uh, back into the, the data science team at the Catapult. Um, so we were concerned when the, uh, the pandemic struck, uh, but seamlessly the teams who were uh, developing that, that new platform were all able to, to work from home, able to communicate with each other. So we were able to do that refresh um, throughout last year. Uh, we were also able to recruit massively into the lab. Uh, we over, over doubled the, the number of homes during the same period. And that was because, the, again, the same uh, digital team had created a new uh, portal to allow people to simply sign up to the lab um, in the matter of, of minutes. So those uh, two things uh, were really important to us being able to continue and, and develop through COVID. One of the interesting things we were able to do is because we have this, this pool of homes who we are communicating with, we are collecting data from, we were actually able to, to analyse how their energy usage had changed during the pandemic. So we got historical data from previous years, we were able to compare that with what we saw during the various lockdown periods. And we were also able to go back and, and talk to people about their experience and, and understand how um, their, their living arrangements might have changed, people moving into the household. Mm. Um, we were able to see um, how their occupancies had changed and mm. also understand their, their energy usage changes. We've actually created a, a little blog on that, which is which is available. And I think, Jake, you're going to uh, make sure that's added into the, the links that go out with this. Yeah, I'm going to put the link in the description for um, anybody who's interested in uh, how we how we got through that. So um, tell me a little bit more about the, the data being collected from the participants and, and how it gets used um, in a living lab trial. Yeah, um, so when somebody decides to join the lab, so, so if you, Jake, wanted to, to join the lab, you go onto our portal and you provide us with a little bit of information about yourself, your household, your type of home you live in, the sorts of tech you've got, whether you, you own an EV, uh, whether you have a heat pump or a more traditional uh, gas boiler providing your heating in your home. So we've got that, that data. Um, in addition to that, once you've joined the lab, you'll be encouraged to connect in your, your smart meter so we can start to see a stream of, of your uh, electricity and gas usage coming back into the gas vault. Um, and we would also, in some instances, provide zonal heating uh, controls. We we'll generally, um, at the moment, uh, send out a, a TARDO 
uh, heating controller. So then we start to see even more information about how people are heating their homes, the different temperatures rooms are set to, mm. um, which gives us an indication of, of occupancy uh, as well. So we've got those, those kind of standard data packages coming in. Mm. And then uh, if we've got a, a trial being offered to, to people, you might need to have additional sensor data so we would do that on a, mm. a trial by trial basis, whether that's humidity or if it's more kind of accurate temperature sensing in different parts of a home, for instance, or or even air quality. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really and it's really interesting data. Um, if you're interested in having a look at the information after this session, then we'll put a link in the description. Um, so there's obviously quite a lot of, you know, uh, personal and sensitive uh, information and data there about the participants. So. How how did we go about um, considering the privacy element when publishing the the data set? Because the data set is is open, anybody can use it. Um, so what what considerations do we have to take? Yeah. So um, our relationship with the people who have volunteered to take part in the living lab is is really crucial to us, and it's the heart of um, any decision we make about sharing data. So as I've described, there's a lot of data we collect about a person's home who lives in their home. Um, we collect kind of salary ranges if people give them to us so we can uh, work out what types of people to invite to trials and make sure we haven't got too many of the same type of person on a particular trial. We've got a nice range. So we've got all of that information and it's it's not appropriate to, to be sharing that uh, widely. So what we do is we uh, unpick uh, the data that we think is appropriate to share um, so it would be things like um, energy usage, uh, it would be things like perhaps temperatures in rooms, which is a valuable source of data um, if you are uh, an academic who wants to have a, a reliable source of information to, to go into your into your research. Um, but we've we've constrained it and make sure make sure that we don't share information that's not that's inappropriate to share. But we also make sure we don't share information which would allow uh, somebody to uh, re-identify who the participant was by putting it with another data set. And one of the, a couple of the interesting things about this Living Lab data that we've published is that we really took a, a really pragmatic view to re-identification. So uh, for example, in the, in the weather data set, um, it gives the identifier of a weather station that could be tied to a geographic location. So we've anonymized that as well for, mm -hmm extra re-identification risk and also in the monitoring data there were named rooms weren't there which um can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the rooms yep so um if, if you're one of our lab participants and you've got a, a zonal controller and you want to change temperatures it it makes perfect sense for you to perhaps name the rooms after your children who who live in those rooms um but of course if we were to make that information public and your children's names are a little unusual, it might be possible to uh, re-identify your family from those, those room names. So we've had to obviously take those, take those out and just put identifiers for you. Yeah. So it, it, apart from uh, the participants in trials, um, who, who do you think would be interested in the actual data output itself? And who's the sort of target for this open information? Um, so we see calls for good quality energy usage data from homes from a, a number of areas. And I think the fact that the catapult is a independent, not-for-profit, people can rely on the data we, we provide. So we see kind of innovators who might want a, a data set to um, consider the, the benefits of their technology against, um, or academics who have a particular research project or a proposition they would like to um, analyze again would perhaps use this as a, a data set to uh, to put into their into their work fantastic so uh, i'm going to put a link to the description a link in the description to the data platform where you can find uh the sets of uh sets of data so we have things like heating targets the home model the sensor data the weather data the user heating schedule there's a really rich data set there from the living lab and uh, we'll be uh, looking to publish uh, more going forward in the future, I think. Um, so thank you very much for your time, Becky. 
Thank you. And I think I'd perhaps just close with uh, the other thing we're going to be making sure you've got access to is a link where if you want to join the Living Lab and be uh, one of our participants, see some exciting new uh, energy services and products and, and test them out in your own home, then uh, maybe you'd like to, to click that link and join us. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Becky. Thank you.